office or whoever's missing it there. Yeah, so this evening I thought we'd work on scripts and dialogues, but I wanted it to be a little more interactive, right? So hopefully you guys are up to like playing a little like uh, back and forth, give each other a hard time and see how it goes. So we're just gonna go over some regular scripts and dialogues that we normally come across, right? So if you're trying to get a listing from your clients, there's a lot of objectives that we come, objections that we come across. Let me just go here into my training script so you guys can read along with me. If there's any specific objections you guys want to cover, we can do that as well. Um, what's the biggest thing you get when you go for a listing appointment? Your biggest objection that you want to practice a script or a dialogue over? Nothing, you guys are good. You get all your listings. There you go. Slam dunk all the listing appointments. So I just put some common ones up here in the scripts and dialogues. Open it up here. Just, That's okay, go ahead. So when you're putting a, when you say, when you're going through your listing appointment, it's when you're uh, kind of getting that deal to kind of list that. You wanna list the property. So right, you're, right. they're gonna throw up an objection and you kind of have to be ready to say, hey, no, this is what my rebuttal is, right? To help you. And you have to make it sort of a pretty natural thing. So that's why it's really good. I go over scripts and dialogues a lot when I do the training, just because I always say it's a good skeleton to kind of say, hey, this is what you're supposed to say back to your client, or this is a good way to rebut this and close this deal. But then you want to get used to the script and dialogue enough that you're going to use your own verbiage when you're talking because you don't want to sound like you're reading off the form. You ever get those cold calls from like duck cleaning company and they're like, hi, good evening, ma'am. Today I would like to talk. You can tell they're just totally reeling off of a script, right? So you want to make it natural and you want to be able to tell your clients, you know, um, you can overcome these objections, right? So scripts and dialogues are a big part of that in training because you want to be able to say that right so here i've just gone over a couple so i have we're going to relist with the same realtor will you reduce your commission that's always a big one we have a friend in the business the other re realtor said they would charge less um, and for sale by owners if you're trying to approach her for sale by owner and close that deal or we're going to keep it off the market for a while i we'll also have a just listed script and a just sold script so we'll see what we go what we get through we don't always get through everything during training it goes by so fast but uh, like I say, if there's any specific ones that you guys want to deal with, then you can let me know. What's your biggest hurdle to overcome when you're trying to close a listing appointment, right? What do you want to say to them? I think the biggest one we get is, will you reduce your commission, right? <clears throat> That's definitely the biggest one we get all the time. Everybody's asking us to reduce our commission at the end of the day. So how are we going to combat that, right? So maybe we can start with that one. So will you reduce your commission, right? So I'll go over this script. I'll read it, and then we can try and just sort of do it back and forth. So, okay, your question is, will I reduce the commission? Great question. I certainly hear that a lot every single day. Can I make a suggestion? I made a note of that question. That'll be one of the first items we'll discuss when I see you. Never discuss commission over the phone. I always say you're never going to close the deal over the phone. It's always face-to-face. -face. No one's going to say, okay, I'll list with you on the phone and sign the paperwork. You have to get a face-to-face -face appointment with people. This will work some of the time, but not all the time. If they persist, I totally understand why you brought up the commission again. Can I share something else with you? In order for you to assess my value and make an informed decision, I'd like to show you my complete marketing plan. That way you can properly assess my value. I can't do that over the phone. I promise I'll discuss the commission when I see you in detail. I always say to people, so like I say, when I'm using my own verbiage, I say to them on the phone, absolutely, I'll come and I'll discuss the commission with you. I have a whole package created where I show you the sales and mark um, that have happened in your neighborhood and comparable properties. And I'd like to bring that to you and my commission as part of what I discuss in that. And they will say, okay, do you want to see, do you want to see you tomorrow, Tuesday, or Thursday? That's your close. You never ask them, when are you available? They'll say, oh, I'll call you next week, maybe sometime next week. You want to give them the two options so they have to pick one or two. Um, in addition to this commission, very often when I'm sitting in front of people, a big objection closer that I use is I always say, if they say, will you reduce your commission? Well, the other agent is reducing their commission. I say, well, if that other agent can't fight for their own worth, how are they going to fight for the worth of your property? I'm here. I'm fighting for my worth. You know, I have good negotiation skills. I'm going to fight for the worth of your property. Right. So you want to remind them that at the end of the day. So do you guys want to try? Do you guys want to try a mock phone call where you're trying to land a listing appointment talking about reducing commission? Who wants to be the agent? I can be the client. Ken, you want to do it? Okay. okay so try to ask me for, uh, uh, for listing appointments. 
Yeah, would you like to reduce your commission, please? No, you're the agent. Why are you reducing oh, your commission? <laughs> you're the agent. I'll be the client. <laughs> I was like, that's easy. <laughs> we go, yes, I would like you to reduce it. <laughs> you are the owner. Yeah, I'm the owner. Mm -hmm. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. My name is Ken Bastan. I work for Remax case. Okay. Uh, I have a 20 years experience. Excellent. So that's very nice. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, you like to sell your house? Uh, yeah, I was thinking about it. I was thinking of putting it on the market. Yeah, because I sold uh, at least one or asking, so maybe you're interested. It's in my business card. Okay, uh, no problem. What so, you we're, we're on the phone though, so you can move business card later. But oh, uh, are you, can you? What commission are you doing right now? Uh, what commission are you going to offer me? Five, five percent. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Don't discuss the commission on the phone. I guarantee you, because okay. that's gonna make the it's gonna make it really easy for the client to shop, right? This is why it's good to practice the scripts and dialogues when you're on the okay. phone. So you gotta think you're on the phone with this person. Yeah. You're not gonna you a you never say no because that's all the client will hear, and you'll never get that listing. So you say instead of saying no, you say yes, absolutely, absolutely. We can discuss the commission as soon as I bring you my package. Okay. I'm gonna do my CMA and give you the comparable properties, and I'm gonna come and show you this and we'll discuss the commission at the, that same time right yeah. so you could try it again i say well you know what's what's your commission ken yeah um so yeah i we can just absolutely we can discuss again the package mm -hmm. we can discuss the uh, what package though like can, why can't you tell me the commission the package. A package. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to tell them you want to tell them that you i have a whole presentation ready for you i'm going to do a cma a comparative market analysis okay. i'm going to bring it to your property i'm going to show you what the recent sales yeah, are in the neighborhood, the neighborhood what's currently up for sale show you okay. sort of where you place in there as far as value market value what i think you're going to sell for okay. it's going to have my marketing plan in it as well and i'm going to tell you guys exactly how um, we can market it. and then at that time my commission is part of that package Okay. Yeah. That's, that's good. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Another screen um, um, slide I like to bring up, and I keep on telling everybody who's regularly training here with me, they're going to get so sick of the slide, but I just bring it up every time I can because um, I think it's such a good tool. And so I'm not sure who's seen it, who hasn't. It's just a good tool to go over quickly to get more commission at the end of the day. Um, I think it's in my CMA here. So we have the commission structure. So we're sitting down with our client now. We've got, we've got past that phone call. We're sitting down with them. And we want to get over this objection of how to get to um, beat these 1% guys out there. Because everybody's saying, will you do it for 1%? Will you do it for 1%? We know at the end of the day, when they say 1%, they mean 2.5 for the co-op brokerage and 1% for the listing agent, right? So how do we get more commission at the end of the day? So we're going to go over this with our clients because the other guy that they interviewed, they interviewed two or three other agents and everyone's saying they're going to do it for 1%. Right. So we're going to say, absolutely. Let me just go over this with you. So it's 5% total commission that's normally offered. Right. Of that 2.5 goes to the co-op brokerage. We never touch that side because I don't want them showing other properties that are available in the neighborhood. I want everybody showing yours as well. More people in the door, more people like your property, push up the value of your property. So we're going to look at this 2.5 side now. Right. This 2.5 is a listing side. Of this 1.25 and 1.25 is my split with my brokerage. This is where the general public gets a little lost. They hear 1% from everybody and they think they have a good understanding of that. And we, because we know, automatically assume that, oh, it's 3.5. They want us to list for one. When they hear the 1%, they don't realize when we explain it this way, 1.25 and 1.25, they don't know what our split is with the brokerage. If somebody blames Salvin or Beheason at the end of the day, they say, man, they take that 1.25 of everything I do, right? They don't know. So of my 1.25, I'm also willing to reduce it 0.25 and give you 1%, just like the other guy said. So instead of coming back with a signature for 3.5, you're coming with 4.75. Everybody kind of follow? Right? Yeah, you're just 4.75. I say, yeah, absolutely. This is the commission structure, five, 2.5 and 2.5. Of my 2.5, I split 1.25 with my brokerage, right? So I'll take 0.25 off of my share and I'll also give you 1% like the other agent said, right? Great, sign 4.75. I just walked away at 4.75 instead of 3.5. It works more often than you, you guys think because we're agents and we do this all day, every day. We fully understand what 1% is. 
these guys are hearing 1%, 1%, 1%, unless it's totally explained to them this way or the other agent explained to them exactly what that 1% is, they're not fully understanding what that 1% is. They're just hearing 1% and I'm, I'm gonna do it for 1% as well, absolutely. So use this tool very often. You can either have your slide ready or draw it out, you know, on pen and paper when your clients are in front of you and see if you can land more commission. And if they say, mm, no, you know, the other guy said he was going to do it for 1% though, and he was doing a lot of marketing. You can even say, fine, you know what? I'll do it for 0.75 then. Sound really impressive. And you're still walking away with 4.5, right? You're still walking away with a whole percent more than you would if you had just agreed to 1% and assumed that your client knew what the 1% is. Just try it. Try it. Not a lot of savvy people out there 100% know what they're talking about when they say 1%. So it works. I can show you guys my listings. I walk away with 4.75 very often when I do it this way. So we'll go back to our um, scripts and dialogues here. Those numbers that you presented on that slide there. Yeah. You can. That's up to you how you want to present that. It's up to you how you want to present that. So at the end of the day, a lot of agents thought, oh, you know what? Here's a really good idea. Now to combat this 1%, uh, I'm going to offer 2.25 or 2%, right? But at the long run, unless it's a really popular property or there's a really good reason or we're in a really hot, hot market, you're kind of killing your clients um ability to sell for top because there are agents up there if you're in the same condo building and six of the same units are up and you're the only one offering two that agent's going to avoid showing your property unless the client specifically asks to see it right so do you uh, do you want to get your sale done i don't mess with the 2.5 very often because i want to bring that sale up i want to have a good name as a realtor i want to sell for like you know a record price in that building or on that street so i really want to push that sale up i don't Unless it's in an area like Hamilton, when I listed, a lot of people were doing 2.25. I was comfortable, right? I was like, oh, everything in the area is 2.25. Why, why give more then, right? Um, unless we did want to be more competitive and give more. So you kind of have to know the market and the neighborhood that you're working in and see, but you never, I don't usually mess with that side, but you can. You're, you're allowed to manipulate it, put whatever you could ask. You could tell your client, let's put 1%. You know what I mean? But the thing is, is why would you do that? You're going to kind of hinder their sale a little bit at the end of the day. Right. Um, and then you can manipulate your side as much as you want. Yeah. So. Um, all right. So the next objection that we come across quite often is we are going to relist with the same realtor. So a lot of these um, clients you have, they think that, oh, you know what? The guy who sold me the house is the one that I have to sell the house with. We're going to relist with the same one. So we'll go over this and we'll try to role play it again and see how you guys do. OK, so you're thinking about relisting with the same realtor. I understand. Thank you for sharing that with me. Can I make a suggestion? Right now you feel the same realtor is your best bet, right? Would you like to be certain? I'm merely suggesting a second opinion. Does that make sense? Can I be that second opinion? Great. Let's set up an appointment. What would be the best time for us to get together? Tuesday or Thursday? And you put in your clothes, which one it is. So a lot of people say, you know, oh, I have a friend in the business. I have a family member. We're going to relist with the same realtor. This kind of objection handling works with all of those. You just say to them, absolutely. Why not? Did you enjoy your services? Great. But wouldn't you like to have a second opinion? Can I just come in and give in a second opinion? Your goal is always to get in front of the client because you have a better chance of closing when you're in front of that client, right? They might be really impressed with the package you brought, right? So for instance, there was one day I was at the kids' um, school and I was standing there and I'm talking to this grandfather and he says, oh yeah, you know, we're thinking of selling my father's house because he just passed away. And I said, oh, I said, remember, I'm an agent. He goes, oh yeah, I totally forgot about that, you know. Somebody else at the school had come just a day or two before and given me a quote on the house. I said, I use this clothes. I said, oh, that's great. I said, can I give you a second opinion? Do you mind if I come after school today? He's like, yeah, sure. Come on by. Right. So I ran home. And again, when we go over the CMA and I don't know if you guys attended the CMA one yet that I've done when I do the training, I tell you guys to have that CMA kit ready, make it look really impressive. Do the five minute CMA on the Stratus and go out the door with your little booklet. So I came and I went and sat down for the appointment and it was like, you know, we're picking the kids up at three. Maybe I was at his house, three 30, four o'clock, something like that. And I said to him, okay, here's my second opinion. And I open it up and I show him how I'm going to market the property. Why choose, you know, century 21 at the time I was with, why choose me as your realtor, the guts of what the comparables are. You know, I pull up the market stats, everything in my CMA. And he says, Oh, wow. You know, she didn't even bring a piece of paper the other day. We just came and had a discussion. He goes, how'd you get this ready so fast? I just saw you a half an hour ago. Right. He goes, you know what? Okay. List the property. And he gave me the listing. Right. So you don't know the power of getting, getting a second opinion, 
sitting down in front, in front of that person, you don't know they might like you more. They might like your presentation more. They might like the way you said you're going to market the property. Maybe the other realtor didn't promise the same things. Being an active realtor, sending out just listed flyers, doing stuff on social media. You know, there might be something from that appointment that you land with them that they'll pick up. So your goal on the phone is always to try to get that appointment with them. So the whole second opinion thing is a, is a good idea, right? So do you guys want to try and practice this one? <laughs> I know it's like difficult and it sounds silly, but the thing is until you're on the phone and you're talking to that client and you get stuck, you're like, oh, what do I say? It's kind of the thing where you have to get on and practice and mess up a few times before you can like execute it properly and land your, land your listing appointments, right? So your idea is to get in front of the person. Do you want to try this one, Gobi? <laughs> no, no, you're the agent. You're the agent. You're calling me the client. You have to say, hi, it's Gobi from Remax. That's okay. We're going to list with the same realtor. You got to try tell them you got convince me to get a second opinion. Yeah, I got to convince you. Yeah. <laughs> You're so shy. I love it. Okay. Divide. <laughs> you guys are shy. Anybody else want to do it? I'm not shy. They are. They are. They are. They're. They're. They're newer. That's why I wasn't picking on them. We're. I'm two months. We're half a month. That's why I said they're newer. Newer. So rookies. <laughs> Well, anyways, that's what you do to close on the phone, okay? Just remember that is anytime people throw up that objection to you, your mm -hmm. script you're going to turn to is getting a second opinion. I'm going to use the same realtor. I have a cousin who does this. Oh, my friend at work told me to use his agent. He did a good job, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's great. No problem. When's he coming? Okay, I'd like to come after him and just so you can get a second opinion. You also want to try to be the last agent coming through because you're going to have the biggest chance to close it. If they're seeing two or three agents, when you come first, they're going to still want to see what those other agents have to say. You have less of a chance of closing your deal. So just as a trick or a tip, you're going to want to say to them, hey, when are they coming? Oh, one's coming Wednesday evening. One's coming Thursday evening at five. Great. Can I come Thursday evening at six? Right? Okay. You can ask them if it's um, for closing lawyer and everything. Uh, you can start something. You know, they talk to them and they, they, they sign the thing. Okay. Uh, do you have a, any lawyer, you know, or I have to get you? Yeah, them. whatever you can offer them. When you offer them value, it's important. You know what I mean? Like I say, you know, um, you want to ask them about the, the second opinion, but when you sit down for that appointment, you want to show them that you have value. Yeah. The only reason I got that listing is because I came with value. I came with research that I had done and what looked like a really impressive package that really the guts of it is only the five minutes that I took when I ran home quickly to print it and run out the door, right? I'll do it. I'll do it next week if you guys want to do it. CMA. I just, I feel like I, re I feel like everybody gets sick of my commission slide and my CMA presentation, but honestly, those are my most popular ones that I do. And I repeat them a lot. So I, I can do it. I can do it on. So next Thursday, we're doing um, a really good. I signed up with the Treb webinar. So I don't know. You guys all got the link. I sent the email. Sign up for it. It's supposed to be really good. It's at a different time. It's not Thursday evening, though, unfortunately, because Treb can only do certain times. So Tuesday, I can do CMA. Tuesday. Tuesday. 1030. Yeah. yeah. Does that work for you? No, uh, you rather Thursday? No, no, no. I have a problem. Uh, no, Thursday I'm already doing some um something like I mean the following Thursday or Tuesday morning. Morning. Whatever you're doing next, is that me? I'll get the well, that's what I'm saying. If you're if you're going to come and attend, we can be pretty interactive about it and go and do it. And if you can do Thursday evening, I'll just do the follow Thursday evening for yeah, CMA. Let's do the, the follow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whenever you guys can attend, right? Because I really like the point of, I like to be really hands-on training here. Even in my last office, I want to give me feedback on topics you guys want to cover or specific things. If I don't know, we'll get a speaker in to come and cover it. You know what I mean? Um, like I love doing goal setting at the end of the year. Around tax time, I always like to bring in a lawyer to tell us what we can write off of our taxes. You know, really helpful topics at different oh, yeah. times of the year. If you guys think of things, if you guys think of things that you need or want, it, nothing's impossible. We've got lots of guest speakers. I have lots of content contacts, mortgage agents, home inspectors, you know, um, that Arshad Khan, watch back his videos. He is excellent because he literally shows us videos of things that I learned when he came in. And he, I didn't meet him until we came to this brokerage. He's a contact through this brokerage um, of things like septic systems and, you know, stuff like that with pictures that we could actually see. You know what I mean? So you can identify yourself. I mean, you don't become an expert and tell your clients, but 
it's good to know really good um, guest speakers that come out. So if you guys need something, let me know and I'll source someone to come in if I don't know it. Right. So, um, yeah. All right. For sale by owner objection. So we have a lot of for sale by owners out there. It's a good pillar to work. So we also talk about the different pillars you can work to get business from. One of them can be for sale by owners. You know, if you guys scour like Kijiji or Facebook Marketplace, a lot of people are trying to sell their property on their own. And it, you have a good chance of landing those appointments because especially if they've been in the market for a couple of weeks, they usually get exhausted. Like, like we were talking about, Diana, you don't realize like how hard our job is sometimes at the end of the day, people put this up on their own. They go, ah, oh, no problem. And they don't realize that they don't want to get bombarded with all those calls. And then every time there's a showing, they have to be present in their property to show their property, right? So it is a good pillar to work, to look for business from. So we go over the um, uh, script for it. So if I bring you a buyer, you'll pay 3%. So a lot of the for sale by owners, when you call them, this is their objection. No, I don't want to list with an agent, but you bring me a buyer and I'll give you 3%. So more than the 2.5, that's the going rate, right? Thanks for that opportunity. I really appreciate it. Can I make a suggestion? I would love to be in a position to speak intelligently to my buyers about your property. What would be the best time for me to stop and preview your home? Tuesday or Thursday? When I see you on Thursday, my presentation only takes 15 minutes. If it makes sense, great. If not, no problem. I look forward to seeing you on Thursday. So when you're talking to the FISBOs, the way you try to close that phone conversation to get in front of them is you want to say to them, hey, I do have buyers. A lot of them are looking, you know, you're calling a FISBO in Scarborough, for instance. Yeah, I have a lot of buyers who are looking in Scarborough, but I don't know what your home looks like. I've never been through it. Can I come and take a look so I can kind of make an informed decision which one of my buyers I'm going to come bring through? Sure, great. I'm going to come see you on Tuesday. I usually am a little sneakier. I don't sort of say ahead of time I'm going to bring my presentation with them, with me. But then when I'm in front of them, they use this objection. So the big objection here um, is how to calm that. Oh, you know what? Bring me a buyer and I'll give you 3%. I go, I go to them, you know what you're doing right now? 99% of the buyers are going to come with an agent, right? They're going to have representation. You're paying the buyer agent 3%. Normally on an MLS listing, you'd only pay them 2.5. 2 so what you're doing right now is you're paying them more than what the going rate is to have their buyer represented and you're going to have no representation. You're paying for the buyer to be protected and you're not paying for yourself to be protected. If you take this listing at 1%, I will list for you at the 1% because these are hard to push up the commission on, on the for sale by owners. You're only paying a half a percent more but now you're, you're, you're protecting yourself. Why would you not put money in towards your best interest, right? You're actually paying a buyer more than the going rate to protect the buyer's interest and you're not protecting your own interest. There's a lot of legalese in these contracts. We see the clauses every day. We can catch little things that people might change, you know, uh, or try to trick us on, you know, get a longer extension on financing or, you know, put something funny in there. We do this all day long and my negotiation skills are excellent. So you're only gonna spend a half a percent more and have your own representation, right? It's powerful when you make people think of it that way that they're, they're oh, no, 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 I don't wanna pay a listing agent. I don't wanna pay for myself to be protected in this transaction, but I'll pay more to this buyer who's going to bring it. They think they're being real savvy and just saving this listing commission. And they don't realize that it's a legally binding contract for the biggest thing, the biggest commodity that you have that you own to sell, right? It's, it, it's pretty silly. And when you reduce it to that, they kind of realize like, oh, well, yeah, I guess I do need my own representation. Yeah. It's a common scenario though? Like it's an extremely common scenario. Every, almost every physical you you call will say, you know, oh no, bring me a buyer, bring me a buyer. I'll even give you 3% because they think that they're saving that commission on the oh, listing. Yeah. Sometimes they don't, sometimes they'll only be giving 2.5 or two, but it still makes sense. You know what I mean? When you say it to them this way, you're saying your but you're paying. This whole thing private, good luck because the statistics out there are 1% of homes are sold completely unrepresented. It's, and it's true. If you look, there's a ton of listings. If you look at the solds in the area, you can even try and pull some of them and see that a lot of things were never, sorry, I guess not. You'd have to look at sales in the neighborhood to see what things were sold, but were never listed on MLS, right? But a lot of them don't sell like that. A lot of them sell with the, the buyer, uh, like um, bringing their agent with them to come and purchase that. And I believe that the stat was 1%. 1% of homes are sold completely private. When a for sale by owner comes up, 99% of the time, uh, a buyer rep brings their, their client. Oh, right. Yeah. 
Or even if somebody sees it on KGG, they call their agent to come place an offer, right? Yeah, it doesn't happen that often. Yeah. And even if you're saving the commission, they say, well, I want to sell it completely private. Who's doing the paperwork? Your, your, your lawyer is definitely going to charge you more than the going rate to create this paperwork now. So now you're paying a lawyer who doesn't do this every day, right? They do the closings and they make sure that, you know, like everything's signed properly and the title searches are done, but they're not negotiating anything between the two of them, like the buyer and the seller for you, right? And if it's anything more than just a closing, when you're handing them the agreement, the agreed upon paperwork, you know, of everything that's been accepted, the lawyer's going to charge you more 100% if it's a completely private transaction. They're not just going to do it for free, right? So it's definitely a big thing to remind our clients that, this is great. You know, I'd love to come and see your property. I'm working with buyers in Scarborough. Here's how I'm landing my appointment to come in your door. I want to come and speak intelligently about the property. So please let me come on Tuesday or Thursday. Then I can figure out what buyers this property will work for. I'll go back and then I'll bring my buyers through. But your main objective at the end of the day is when you actually get there that you're going to try to close this appointment. You're going to try to talk to the for sale by owner. Normally I try to pick um, at different things just to see how they're faring with their listing. I'll be like, this property is really beautiful. Have you had a lot of viewings? Oh, we haven't had that many. Well, where are you advertising on? Do you know that MLS is one of the strongest presence, like the biggest presence online, you know, first page annihilation. If I search detached home in Scarborough, an MLS listing is coming up for sure, way before your, your listing that you have up. Because who are you? You're not advertising, right? MLS is paying for that SEO marketing online. Not only that, I'm a Remax agent. Use the strength of your franchise. We're paying this monthly. We're viewed like three to one online. The SEO marketing online is crazy. So right after um, Stratus MLS, it's going to be a Remax listing that's going to come up there, right? When you're searching for something pretty specific, like something in Dorset Park Detached Home, it's going to be our listings because we're Remax agents, and it's going to be Stratus when we load something on Stratus. So you have to remind them that it's exposure on MLS. So not only are you trying to save the commission, but you're also killing the value of your sale, right? The exposure on MLS, that mass exposure is going to bring in people to see your property. When more people come through your property, that's when there's more interest and that's what pushes the price up on your home. If you're just posting on Kijiji and you, you've been up for two months and you've only had four people walk through your house, that's not going to be a strong thing that's going to push up the value of your home. So now you're not only... You may be saving the commission, but you're certainly not getting the highest value that you could get for your home with an offer, right? So you have to remind them of these things at the end of the day. Okay, so we're going to keep it off the market for a while. So this is basically, I guess, mostly if you're chasing probably an expired or a terminated listing, right? Uh, a lot of them will say, no, you know what, I'm planning on keeping it off the market for a while. Now we've had it up and just not getting what we want. So let's, let's just let it be for now. So they say, okay, you're planning to keep it off the market for a while. Is that correct? Thanks for sharing that with me. I really appreciate it. Do you mind if I ask you a question? If you had an offer for your home in the next 30 days for the right price and the right closing, would you consider it? If you would give me 15 minutes of your time, I would let you know if I could do that. So if they say, if I say, oh, you're looking for a million and I look and I truly think that I can sell this property for a million, but I see some pitfalls maybe in the previous listing or maybe it wasn't marketed well. Maybe the, the agent went in with their iPhone and took some dingy photos. I think I could really spruce this up and sell it. I'm going to be honest with the client and say, you know, I really think that if I brought you an offer for a million, would you accept it? They say, well, yeah, that's what I'm kind of looking for. Okay, great. Let me bring my package to you because I think I could do this, this, and this different, right? So when you're Again, one of your pillars I talk about working is working your just listed and just, uh, sorry, your just expired and terminated listings, right? So we'll go through that again another day. But when you go through and you're looking at how to search those expired and terminated and you're trying to get the listings from those ones that have been up, this is a good way to combat them because a lot of them will just say, no, no, I'm going to take it off the market for a while. And I can tell you there's maybe been a hundred times when I started doing cold calls when I get on the phone and I call an expired or terminated, they give me this and I'd say, oh, okay, thank you, click. And a week later, I'd see their listing back up with another agent. And I'm going, what did I do wrong, right? Because you have to push a little bit. You have to understand that it they have it up. They have an interest in selling unless they were just looking loo and testing the market to see if they get some crazy price. So if I saw that they were up for something way above, you know, the market value of the neighborhood, I'm not going to change, chase that terminated or expired. But if it's a genuine one that I think I can sell and I'm trying to actively pursue it, you know, this is a good way to combat that. 
would you sell it if I got you that million on your property that you were looking for? Yes. Okay, great. I'd like to come and show you my package and how I can like go over what my marketing skills are, how I'll, uh, I'll do your, your MLS listing different than this agent did. Right. Uh, it's important at the end of the day to be classy, though. Don't be bashing what the other person did. You know, definitely just say, we you know, what I can do different, what I can improve from the last listing. Because a lot of times we can look at these listings and we can see the pitfalls of what that agent has done. Like, you know, when we're looking at pictures all day and we see that they've caught themselves in the mirror, they've taken these dingy photos or the description is full of errors or it doesn't really say anything powerful in the description. We talked about loading a great listing a couple of weeks ago. You guys can watch that video back, how to load a great listing. If it's not using those tricks and tips, you know, maybe it's not catching the attention of the public looking on realtor.ca and it's not getting the traction it needs, right? So maybe you can go with your um, listing appointment and sort of do that for those terminated and, and expired. Anybody have any questions so far? Well, it's running run out of time so fast. We have 15 minutes left. Anything specific that you guys have questions or you want me to just go over a couple more scripts? Talk, talk, talk. I feel like a talk, talk, talk. You guys can interrupt anytime, right? So um, another script that I really like is my just listed script. And I use this one religiously. So if I get a listing, part of my marketing that I tell my clients is if I get your listing, I'm going to call your whole neighborhood or I'm going to call your whole building. And I really do. I'll sit over the first few days of my listing and I'll call because I believe in six degrees of separation. Someone knows someone that wants to move into that building. Right. So a couple of objections are happening here. I want to sell it fast. I might be able to double end it. Right. Uh, and I'm being active. I'm getting to I have a reason to talk to this neighborhood now or a reason to talk to this building to get to know some of the people and kind of pick their brain and see if they want to sell as well. Right. So I have a great opportunity to get on the phone and I love to talk. Right. So I use the script a lot. I'll read it and then I'll, I will kind of go over maybe how I do it a little different. Hi, this is Christine from Remax with your, um, your local real estate office. How are you doing today? Reason for my call is that I just listed your neighbor's home for sale at 21 Main Street. The asking price is $7.99. A lot of people on the phone will already want to cut you off. Oh, they hear Remax. No, no, I'm not selling my home, right? I was wondering who you, you might know that would like to move into our neighborhood. It's kind of like a pick your own neighbor program. A lot of times I reuse this line and they giggle on the phone. They kind of like settle down. So I get Christine from Remax. Oh, no, no, I don't want to sell my home. No, no, no. I'm not calling you to sell your home. I wanted you to know that I listed something down the street and I kind of want, you know, it's like a pick your own neighbor program. Do you know somebody that wants to move in to the neighborhood? Thanks for thinking about that essay. Lots of buyers will look at this property, not select it, but still want to be in this neighborhood. Obviously, if they looked at a house in this neighborhood, they're good. They want this neighborhood, but that house just wasn't for them. That only one person can buy that house, the listing that I have. So if you were to, if you were to sell, where would you move? I'm going to try to get their motivation here now. They say, oh yeah, I might be thinking of selling. Okay. What would be your closing date? Uh, I just got a new job. I need to be moved by December. Great. Let's set an appointment so I can discuss some of the procedures with you and let you know what you can expect to receive financially for your property. So like I say, this is one of my favorite, favorite scripts. I use it all the time and I land lots of appointments for it, but I also get familiar with buildings, especially if I have more than one listing in a certain area or a certain building, right? It gives you the opportunity to talk to people because if you're friendly, people will talk to you, especially when you get past that, the, the point where they want to hang up on you as soon as they hear Remax. If you make them giggle with a nice little joke, like it's kind of like a pick your own neighbor program. Once you're beyond that point, you have the opportunity to talk more with them because now they're relaxed on the phone. Oh, do you know of any of your neighbors thinking of selling? If they say, no, I wasn't really thinking of selling, but that's a good price they're getting. You know, maybe I would consider it. Okay, great. Any of your neighbors thinking of selling? I don't know. Well, you know what? I would really appreciate the referral. You have to ask for business at the end of the day. Just remember that in sales, because this is sales at the end of the day, right? Um, if you know anybody, anybody in the neighborhood or anybody in your building that you hear, please give them my name. I would love it because I have all these buyers who didn't buy this unit or this home in this area that I had it for sale or that I currently have. And only one person can buy it. So I'm going to have buyers looking in the area and I definitely can, will have other um, potential buyers for anybody looking to sell in this neighborhood, right? It's a powerful script and it really, really works. And it gets, like I say, gets you past that hang up point on the phone, which is such a poignant thing. I laugh because a lot of the people, if you guys come in, we'll do cold calling. I'll listen to you guys do cold calling and we can start dialing. If you want to start working pillars and looking for business, I'm totally up for it because I love it. Because I went to a conference once and it was really inspiring. They said, out of every hundred calls you make, you might land one, one appointment. 
right? To go see someone that week. So think of how many calls you have to make that week to try and land an appointment, right? But then he said, you know, every time I'm on the phone there, I get hung up on and I go, yes, one more closer to my appointment, right? <laughs> so it was funny because it's true because a lot of people get frustrated. I think cold calling is really hard and it's not easy. You have to get over the shy factor. It is a big thing, but you also have to get used to getting hung up on. And now we just sort of laugh it off. It's good if you sit in pairs and do it, you know, if you're sitting back here and a couple of you are in the cubbies, because you can sort of laugh it off and blow, blow off some steam with the person beside you and just say, oh man, I just got hung up on it. Isn't that funny? They said, you know, something funny on me and hung up, you know? So it's good if you do it in pairs. I encourage you guys to come in. I love cold calling. I do a ton of it at the end of the day. So, um, and it is a good pillar to work. Okay. Your just sold script is similar to your just listed script. Again, super, super powerful. You don't have to have your own listing, by the way, to do the just sold and the just listed scripts. Um, if you're a newer agent, right, and you want to get started, use the just listed and the just sold in our brokerage. Um, I'll do a quick um, search. Actually, you know what? I'll do it now while I'm talking about others. I forget. Do you guys know how, know how to look up the brokerage history of what's happening? in MLS, right? When you go to the search function, all you're going to do is go to predefined searches. And you're going to go to my brokerage history. And say, I want to know what residential freeholds we have up for sale now. I want to do some just listed calls, right? Let's pick all the areas because I don't know where we have listings right now exactly. And submit. So you take that little extra step and you go to my brokerage history before you do your actual search. If you're searching in a specific area, you can. But for instance, say, you know, I really want to, I really want to work in Ajax because that's my farm area. So I'm going to take this just listed on 33 Maple because when you use your own brokerage, you don't have to ask permission of that agent. Within the brokerage, we can use each other's listings and we can advertise, like we can advertise and we can like call people and say, hey, we have this listing up. We're the almighty we in this brokerage. If you go Outside of the brokerage, you have to remember to email that agent and ask their permission to advertise it. Yeah. So I do, I follow a few uh, realtors on like social media, like Instagram and stuff. We're very dependent on social media. Right. Now, I think it's a marketing tool as well, where every day one cannot have a list. No. So it's probably that they're, they're probably listing did. and marketing their colleagues. Uh, Absolutely. Listing. In their brokerage. They're like using that. the strength of their brokerage. So Absolutely. This thing, I don't need her permission to kind of like. Not within the brokerage. Going marketing yeah. Something? But we're all bound under one brokerage umbrella. So we don't have to ask each other. That's why it's considered multiple representation. Even if I, if I don't double end it, but I work with you, it's still multiple representation. We're under the same umbrella as the brokerage. So I can advertise your listings and I can go and I can push them out and I can make just listed and just sold calls off of the stuff within the brokerage. If you specifically really want to farm. I don't know, bridal path. No, so and we don't have a lot there. You can call other, you can call other agents or email other agents. Better to email because then you have it in writing. You can still do it, but you have to get their permission, permission. first. Yeah. yeah. I have to ask <clears throat> to permission. See, this did I have to ask her to advertise. Not in the same brokerage. No, same, I, I Maybe just as a layer to be polite or whatever. But honestly, that if you were putting up big ads and social media, maybe I'd I'd call Diana just to be nice. I'd be like, hey, do you mind? I won't put in the <clears throat> Because yeah, some people it's true they might get the thing up, but they're not they can't really do much about it when you're within the same brokerage. Within the same brokerage, you're allowed to advertise. But I think it would be nice, but I don't think I need to call if I'm just gonna do some just sold or just listed phone calls, which is what we're focusing on now, right? So just go in there and find some things in the brokerage so if you don't really. And, uh, no, and I would call and I would just say, hey, you know, we just listed um, an odd uh, thing here at 33 Maple Street. It's up for 659, right? And this is whose? Vigi's yeah, um, listing, right? So and then if, even if they say to you, hey, that's, that's not your name on there, they'll, no, no, but it's my brokerage. We just listed it. Like it's it's not wrong with what you're saying, right? So sorry. And then if they have a query, then I can just route it to that realtor no why you want to try and sell it oh I'm, I'm you're doing that. the effort to do the call you're doing the effort to do the call so it's not it's not like it's not wrong what you're doing you know you're not taking business away from vg necessarily you know what i mean what if somebody specifically was interested in her property and called her directly or you know what was going off her um ads and then you try to take the client yeah but it's your active calling right now that is pulling this client so you're absolutely allowed to take them on as a buyer this agent doesn't know that person exists right now. 
they haven't been able to pull them through their own marketing or their own listing. And then you know how like right? some of them have their own little bro- like banners on social media. So I like if I put Dinah has got a property listed, I put just listed and I have my banner because it's part of my marketing campaign. Mm-hmm. But it's not my listing, but I can because I'm looking. You can, fire. you can. But like if you guys are both on your same social media, and you have a lot of the same friends, maybe I just like let her know out of courtesy. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to start like, you know, something. I'm just saying for these calls, I don't gotcha. think you need to call and tell people that you're making cold calls yeah. in the neighborhood. It's your right to do so as an agent, right? right. Um, but yeah, I would be, you know, you got to remember we're all supposed to be friends too in the brokerage. So if you yeah. think it's going to be like, if you would be upset if you saw it, I, I think it's a good idea to shoot people an email anyways, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. So we got like six more minutes left. I'm just going to go quickly. And do this last one because it's very similar to the just um, listed, the just sold script. So, hi, this is Christine calling from Remax. Re- reason for my call is I just sold your neighbor at 21 Main Street and it sold for the price of 1.4 million. Isn't that crazy? There are a few buyers that didn't get this property. So, you're using the same sort of tactic, but now you have some clout. You've sold the property. So, you have something impressive to tell them. So, the just sold call is almost more powerful than the just listed. If you're not doing just sold flyers or just sold calls, you're doing yourself a disservice because you should be able to bank off the sales that you make, right? That's the biggest successful pillar that I use is that if I've just sold something, I'm going to call that whole neighborhood to try and get something else in that neighborhood. I have a track record. The neighbors have seen my. They sold sign go up and they saw how quickly I did it and they saw how much I sold it for. I'm going to use that. I got to get on the phone and call everybody in that neighborhood now or I got to send out a flyer if I don't have time. If I'm really busy, most of the time it'll be a flyer. I like to call though because I like to get on the phone with people and get into a bit of a conversation and get to know them and be like, oh, you know, get talking to the old lady who tells me that two doors down just had a baby and they've outgrown the home. Maybe I want to go knock on their door now. And, you know, it's very, it's, it really is quite surprising what kind of information you'll get when you're friendly and you talk to a a lot of the neighbors in the neighborhood, right? Because you want to be farming and like, you know, really taking care of a neighborhood and make it your own because you want to be the person on the top of mind in that neighborhood, right? That they're going to call if they need to sell. Everybody knows, everybody lives in an area. Who is this for sale sign that you see consistently in your neighborhood? This is what that agent's doing. He's cold calling. He's doing just sold, just listed. And he's getting a track record because everybody in that neighborhood is going to think of him. And that's why him or her, sorry. And that's why his or her sign is going up consistently in whatever neighborhood you're in. We all know who that person is, right? So definitely, definitely something you guys should do. Anybody have any questions? How everybody online, everybody online is quiet this evening. Kuga and Addy, how are you? All right, everybody, you have a good week. You let me know if there's anything you want me to cover next week. Sign up for the webinar on Thursday. I think it's a really good topic. I know uh, I tried to put the description in the email because I, it was a lot to read, but read through it because it's not just about condominiums. It's about things that I want to get to know. Like they were talking about assignment sales. I, I know about assignment sales, but they were talking about how we could use tools in Stratus, which I wasn't even aware was available to look up for assignment sales. So um, sign up for the webinar, attend it, enjoy it. If you guys need me at all this week, you know how to get a hold of me. All right. I will talk to you guys soon. Have a good evening.